Hey everyone, finish watching the next Dino Thunder episode, Bully for Ethan, and this one is kind of a weird episode for me. There's stuff in there that I really like, then there's stuff that just doesn't do anything for me, and I feel like they could have done a lot more with. So, it starts off, things are going pretty normal at school, Ethan is showing off some trick in a computer game, Connor's practicing soccer, this other kid playing soccer is Derek. He kicks the ball right in front of Ethan, knocking his laptop out of his hands. Derek just laughs and tries to start a fight with Ethan after he confronts him about it. At Tommy's lab, Kira's helping Dr. O sort out some stuff. There's a box of old photos, which includes some pictures of Tommy and the Mighty Morphin Rangers. Kira finds another picture. It's Tommy with Mercer and someone else she doesn't recognize. Tommy says it's Terrence Smith, or Smitty. Him and Smitty were friends until Mercer chose Tommy over Smitty for a job. Smitty was in an accident later, and Tommy doesn't go into specifics. At the Island Fortress, Mesagog is scolding Zeltrax for being too obsessed with revenge against the Black Ranger. He leaves, and then Trent appears to talk to Zeltrax. Trent is still completely controlled by the evil White Ranger. Trent proposes to help Zeltrax in exchange for his help to get Mesagog. Zeltrax reluctantly agrees. At school the next day, Derek challenges Ethan to a fight. They're interrupted uh, by class starting. Ethan begins to go to class, but then he sees Zeltrax outside with a new monster. Just as he's about to morph, a bunch of kids show up all around, and he doesn't want to risk revealing his identity. Luckily, Kira's nearby, so she morphs and takes over the battle. Ethan slips away, morphs, and then rejoins the fight. Cassidy and Devin keep getting in the way, trying to record the fight, and that doesn't really go anywhere. Zeltrax tells the rangers to take a message to the Black Ranger. He wants to meet him in a warehouse, or else he'll release the monster Termite Tron loose on the city. Ethan and Kira rush back to class, but they're late and get detention. Derek trips Ethan, and he gets detention too. Kira and Ethan tell Connor to tell Dr. O about Zeltrax. At the Island Fortress, Trent is talking with Zeltrax again, and Trent changed his clothes. He's wearing a sweater vest. Makes him look, uh... I don't like him. Tommy and Connor go to the warehouse, but only see Termite Tron. Kira and Ethan leave detention. Ethan tells Derek he'll be back later for the fight. The Rangers unite and battle Termite Tron. Termite Tron has a really weird thing. He wears this wooden placard that at first had Japanese text on it, but now there's a picture of a wheel on it. It's kind of weird. Don't really know what the relevance of that is. I'm sure it meant something in Abba Ranger. In fact, I'm pretty sure it meant something in Abba Ranger, whereas over here in Power Rangers, the writers are just hoping that you don't notice that. So they defeat the monster, and Trent orders Zeltrax to make it grow. Zeltrax goes to fight Tommy because Tommy's Zord is useless and Tommy needs something to do. Zeltrax reveals to Tommy that he is Smitty. After the accident, Mesagog rebuilt his body with cybernetics. Zeltrax retreats because, of course, he does, and the Rangers destroy Termite Tron. Mesagog, back at the Island Fortress, is using his forehead beam thing on Trent and reveals that he knows about the deal that he made with Zeltrax. Mesagog gives Trent the chance to remain loyal to him. And uh, that's all we get from that. Back at school, Derek and Ethan confront each other, and instead of fighting, Ethan shows Derek how to improve his soccer skills. Derek tries out Ethan's advice, and it works. And then Derek admits that he felt insecure around Ethan and thought Ethan wouldn't talk to him. Ethan accepts his apology, and everyone is friends now. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here, but then at the same time, stuff I'm not a fan of. The Rangers seem to have completely forgotten about Trent. It reminds me of, in Dino Fury, how they handled Zed. Like, the Rangers just forget about him after his initial appearance, uh, until the writers want him back. Except in Dino Fury, Zed wasn't constantly there to remind us that the Rangers forgot about him. But Trent plays a major role in this episode, making it, like, really obvious that the Rangers just kind of forgot or don't care what he's going through now. The pictures Kira goes through have raised a lot of speculation over the years. It's just meant to be a cute little reference to Tommy's past, but in context, it makes no sense for these pictures to exist. One of Zordon's rules was to keep their identities a secret. In this very episode, secret identities are a factor, so why in the world are there pictures of the Mighty Morphin Rangers unhelmeted? 
The white stranger photo was the most puzzling thing, since only Kimberly saw him and she didn't have a camera. So I was wondering, is this a historical photo that was colorized? Actually, that would have been kind of a neat little thing if the picture of the white stranger was, like, yellowed and in black and white, rather than it just being, like, a stock photo. The other Easter egg here is the various Sentai logos on Tommy's folders and things. The There's never been any explanation for the existence of these, though an odd coincidence with them is that the legendary new powers of Super Mega Force coincide with the logos here, and I always wondered if the choices in Super Mega Force were influenced at all by this blink and you'll miss it Easter egg. Terrence Smith's nickname Smitty makes it a bit difficult to take him seriously, though it did make me wonder if Smith being Smitty meant that Mercer and Oliver were Mercy and Ollie. I like evil Trent, but it's kind of distracting knowing that this isn't really Trent, it's the evil White Ranger entity that's controlling him. Trent is just a puppet for the White Ranger. I like Ethan having to hold back morphing so he doesn't reveal his true identity, and I'm kind of surprised a season set in a high school doesn't focus more on the aspects of other students potentially finding out who the Rangers are and also missing class to go fight a monster. That's always something that fans pointed out about Mighty Morphin, that the Rangers are constantly cutting class to go fight the monsters, and yet somehow they keep good grades. Well, Dino Thunder was a chance to explore that a little bit, but they just kind of don't, at least not at this point. Zeltrax being Smitty is revealed to Tommy, and I can't help but think his motivations are a bit weak. We don't get any backstory for Smitty outside of what Tommy tells us, and that's only a tiny bit like I knew this guy he was in an accident and that's it it's really disappointing since Zeltrax was being built up as a mystery and then it's finally revealed that he's this new guy we've never heard of before and one of the problems with Smitty I think is there's just not nearly enough focus with him and also maybe just call him Smith human characters that came before uh, Zeltrax, Smitty, that are kind of similar are Dr. Ferrix and Frax and Victor Adler and Master Org. They both got a lot of backstory, their motivations are clear, and Zeltrax, by comparison, gets almost nothing. And another subtle difference between him and the other villains is the length of time that passes between when he was like a normal person and when he was a monster. Frax's time in between being killed by arson, or well, almost killed by arson, and becoming a minion of Rancix isn't quite clear. Since Nadira isn't there, it's possible that she wasn't even born yet, so that would make Frax, uh, well, Ferrix as Frax, somewhere in his mid-twenties, I think, is the age they're going for with Nadira. Master Org had the entire length of Cole's life to go insane, consumed by the hatred of the supernatural entity controlling him. Zeltrax apparently became the way he was relatively recently, and it lessens the impact. I feel like if there was more time in between, like, him just being Smitty, and then him slowly being brainwashed over the course of years by Mesagog or something, it'd work out a little better. But it just seems weird that he'd become an evil monster so quickly just because Tommy got a job he wanted. That's such a weak motivation. And... Like, I was thinking, okay, well, Mesagog's the one who, like, rebuilds Smitty into Zeltrax, so maybe he implanted something to enhance his grudge against Tommy. Take this minor grudge against Tommy and turn it into, like, full-on hatred and wanting to kill him. But if that was the case, it seems to have backfired, since at the beginning of the episode, there's a whole thing with Mesagog complaining that Zeltrax is too obsessed with revenge against the Black Ranger. My other thought here is that initially there probably was more backstory to Zeltrax, but then Disney stepped in and told them to tone down darker elements and remove anything that humanizes Zeltrax, which could possibly explain why there's not a whole lot concerning Smitty. When Zeltrax was still Smitty, where was he when the accident occurred? Was he somewhere close to Mesagog? And then that made me think... Was he in that explosion that Tommy and Mesagog were both in at the beginning of Dino Thunder? If Smitty was in that explosion from the beginning that uh, Mercer and Tommy were in, that would possibly mean that he was still working with Mercer, just not on the same job that Tommy was. And that's another weird thing. They never really explain what exactly the job is that Tommy got over uh, Smitty. 
Was it working on the mind control monster from last episode? The other thing that I was wondering was if potentially Mesagog had some kind of hand in the accident that Smitty was in. Because if that's the case, then it would also make sense for why he's right there, ready to help Smitty. It's kind of like in Pine Samurai, when uh, Decker, is, when he's killed, when his house is on fire, and then Serrator just pops up. Like, the heavy implication is that Serrator is the one who did this in the first place because he sensed something in Decker that he could use. Back to the other plot, I like the plot with Ethan and Derek, but it feels disconnected, especially at the end. There is one really awkward moment where the writers try to tie in the two plots, with Tommy saying the Zeltrax won't stop bothering them until we stand up to him. Tommy's unaware of what Ethan is going through, and this line doesn't sound natural at all. I'm really not a fan of Zeltrax and Smitty. I think they're dull, boring characters, both of them. I think Smitty had the opportunity to have more depth to him. The same with Zeltrax. I think Zeltrax, they probably could have built him up a little better for this reveal, but in the end, it just it doesn't work for me, and as far as I know, like it never really ends up working for me, so... Yeah, Zeltrax is a dull character, Smitty's nothing, and he has a dumb name that I don't like, and there's a few other things I want to talk about. Elsa doesn't appear in this episode, and that's really unusual. The guy that plays Derek is uh, Dwayne Cameron, who would go on to play Tizon, the Mercury Ranger in Operation Overdrive. That's neat, I like seeing little things like that. The last thing I want to talk about is those uh, Sentai logos that pop up in uh, Tommy's piles of stuff. Okay, when I was younger, and I was a big nerd, like, even bigger than now, I actually took notes on all the Sentai logos that pop up. So, let's see. The earliest is Goggle 5. That's a really interesting one, which I don't think we see Goggle 5 in Super Mega Force, but I could be wrong. It might show up. It's at least in the Legendary Battle. They're all in there. Change Man. Yeah, Change Man was in Super Mega Force. They called it Powers of the Great Dragon or something silly. Uh, Live Man. Was Live Man in... I don't think Live Man was in Super Mega Force. Flash Man, which, uh, yep, that was in there. I remember that one really well, because that's the one Emma turns into, and she says something like, bet you didn't expect to see this, or something, and I wrote down in my notes at the time, uh, Unexpected Rangers, because I didn't know what they were going to end up calling them. I think they ended up calling them... I don't know. Uh, Die Rangers symbol shows up, and... Oh yeah, they're also in Super Mega Force. Mask Man. Yep, they're in there. Uh, I remember them. And Five Man, which pretty sure Five Man shows up at some point in Super Mega Force. So yeah, all those symbols are oddly things that showed up in uh, Super Mega Force, and it's really unusual. There's also some stuff here that isn't in Super Mega Force, and there's some stuff in Super Mega Force that probably isn't in here. But so many of them coincide. It made me wonder if there was genuinely any kind of. Uh, influence taken from this specific episode, and in particular, that weird little easter egg. Yeah, despite a few quibbles, it's a pretty good episode. My biggest problem is just that the various elements of this episode don't mesh well together. That's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya. It took her, dude!